worship is about to begin. So let us find our hearts to receive our Lord.
Y'all look so good this morning. Remember to stand with a story to tell to the nations. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Uh, give a story to tell to the nations. <laughs> Again, 
and have the opportunity to come and to speak to them. Um, I'm sure that any of them that you engage and talk to would say that they are just feeling so blessed to have a wonderful place to live. Your offering also has made it possible for all the Wesley Woods senior living in the North Georgia Conference. We have eight facilities to have a chaplain. And I was the last one placed. There was no chaplain before uh, we moved up here um, at, the, at the Brandon Lodge Simpson Estates. And so I'm the first chaplain to fill that position. So I want to thank you again for your generosity and your gifts that enabled me to uh, have this wonderful ministry with the folks over there that I truly love. And I do want to invite you when we have visitors again come to tour the facility to get in touch with me, and I'd love to show off Brandon Lodge and Simpson Estates to you. Again, thank you so much for all of your support. We are very grateful, Melanie, for the work that you do. And uh, I, I, I'm fortunate that I am the one that is also blessed with that as you work and you uh, have started again or started up again the Sunday night or Sunday evening worship services as well as Bible study during the week and so I'm glad that things are opening up for you all so that uh, your ministry can, can flourish as well. I believe, am I right to say that we helped with uh, providing the, the Thanksgiving meal uh, this past uh, Thanksgiving yes. was one of the major th contributions that we made. Uh, in addition to our regular uh, communion offering for that month uh, a year ago. So uh, we're grateful to be a part of that. We had four people go down to Noonan, Georgia. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Do you remember? April 1st, there was a F4 tornado that ripped through uh, the southern part of that town. It is devastating. It is still looks and is described as a war zone. I can, uh, I think I can speak for the other three that went along with me uh, to say that it was overwhelming even now to see the destruction and the needed repair. They said that over 1,700 homes were damaged, three to 400 were completely um, un unsalvageable. There are many people now that are without a place to stay and much of the hotel motel space is taken up by these families um, and a place to live. We are going to ask for you to consider that because our church is going to partner with our sister church down there, Newton Chapel. You see a brief um, explanation of that and the way that you might donate to that cause as well. Uh, I hope that you will consider this. This is something that's going to be ongoing. It's not just this month. It's just not this Sunday. But I hope that you'll think about how that our church will partner with. We're not sure how it's going to happen, uh, how that's going to be. I know that uh, our presence there meant a lot to the pastor and to the families and the homes that we went to uh, that were severely damaged. Just to hear their stories of survival was overwhelming. And each one knew exactly where they were, how they were preparing for that tornado as it came and ripping through and outside even looking for it and then quickly jumping into safety. Let us also look at the names that we have that are before us. Charlotte, Ruth, Jean, June, and John. And I also want to lift up... Um, this was a, a relative of uh, Brenda Maynard, Kirsten and, and Josh Jackson, who, who lost their baby in, in delivery. Uh, they're overwhelmed maybe with grief. And so let us remember these. We sit next to a pool of tears, do we not? Wherever we go, we sit next to a pool of tears. May we have a compassionate heart. May we be ready to extend our love for all those that we meet, to reach out, to go and meet our neighbor. Let us pray. 
Oh God, we thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day. Indeed, in our time here, we think about what we will do outside today. What ways will we go to enjoy the day in which you've given to us? Beautiful weather, beautiful scenery, a place in which it is enchanted of a beautiful valley and beautiful mountains. Oh God, we can't wait to go out and enjoy this day. God, let us hear your call upon our lives as we go. And may we go and remember those others that are around us that may not have community, that may not have friends just yet, that still are searching for places and spaces of which they can belong. Oh God, may we go with your love. May we go with your kindness and generosity. May we go with radical hospitality to those who truly need to be in fellowship, in community, in a place where they feel a sense of belonging and purpose. Lord, and we still may have our doubts of ourselves. Where's our place? Where's our purpose? And Lord, may we as a church continue to invite others to find that place and purpose, to find avenues of service, to find ways in which we reach out our own and share our own gifts and talents. God, let us be that church that is not only invitational, but welcomes in ways that involve. So from invitation to involvement, for the cycle to continue, Lord, may your people find community, Christian community that changes and transforms our hearts and lives. Lord, where places of ministry, whether it's in Brennan Lodge or whether it's in Noonan, Georgia, or whether it's right here in Young Harris, Blairsville, or Hiawassee, or Clay County, Lord, may we be the church that goes, that goes in all directions, but following you most of all. Lord, hear us in our prayers. Hear us in our doubts. Hear us in our concerns for this world in which we live. We are grateful that you are with us. And no matter as we go with our doubts, we know that we go not alone. And so we continue to be a people of prayer as we pray as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I want you to know that um, we've had a, a small committee uh, meeting since March of 2020. And we have occasionally um, been in the midst of this time also brought together our administrative board to make decisions again and again just as how we're going to live together in the midst of this pandemic. And as would you should expect is that we are a diverse congregation. We have a diversity of opinions on any variety of topics. And yet I am always grateful for how our leaders will come to a consensus to, to agreement and say this is how we should move forward. So as you see today, we don't have any blue tape anymore. We are, uh, yeah, go ahead and clap. We may not be moving as fast and forward as you would like, uh, but trust me, there are those that would have us move slower. But yet we're trying to find a reasonable way in which we think this is what's good for us. So please uh, remain to be patient. And please recognize that uh, we are trying to think about everybody in all of this. It is so good to see you here. And it is so good that we, it has made us develop a ministry of which we can appreciate that there's, there are those that are looking online and, and receiving the, the good news of Jesus Christ in music and in message uh, uh, online. And so that is something that certainly is uh, a wonderful ministry that's developed out of all this that more than likely uh, I don't see Jim doing and I certainly would have been jumping at the bit to make it happen. Uh, the fact that, that my words now live in infamy is a little uh, overwhelming at times. Uh, nonetheless, I'm grateful that uh, for us to gather together and be the people of God. As we've also talked about after Easter, we've talked about the next words of Jesus, how Jesus wanted to really give this encouraging message that things were going to be different, but things were going to stay that he was going to be with them and that things were going to be different, but yet Jesus was going to send a comforter, or Holy Spirit to, to empower them. And so that as Easter was the power of resurrection, now he wanted to send them forth with the power of love. And these next words that we have been going through and will continue to go through the next couple of weeks is how that Jesus wanted to prepare the disciples to move forward. Today we end with the gospel, what's in the end of the gospel of Matthew, Matthew 28, beginning with verse 16. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, did you hear that? Now, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Some doubted? Are you kidding me? These are the people who've walked with him for three years. They've seen his miracles. They've seen his infinite compassion and love. And there are those that have joined in worship and they are doubting? Well, in times of stress, I recognize some of us doubt. In the midst of storms, I understand people doubt. In the midst of sorrow and grief and tragedy, some of us have our doubts. And even now we recognize and just go ahead and admit to one another that sometimes we come on Sunday mornings and we have our doubts. And we are just the same as those disciples. Moving forward in life without loved ones, we have our doubts. Taking on new responsibilities without much guidance, we have our doubts. 
These disciples had every reason to have their doubts, feeling that Jesus was no longer going to be with them, feeling like their journey of transformation and renewal was now over with, that Easter resurrection was still too recent, too unbelievable, you might say, for some. What will the eleven do now? How will they move forward? In his book, The Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations, Bishop Snazy of the United Methodist Church lists that the first practice is radical hospitality. Radical hospitality. I was a stranger, the scripture says, and you welcomed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. There is much scriptural support that one of the practices of the church should be radical hospitality. I don't know about you, but when we think of radical hospitality, we also may be thinking about southern hospitality. Cold lemonade and strawberry shortcake. Are my favorite, <laughs> which I wouldn't mind that one, sweet tea and pecan pie. Uh, amen. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> we go to a local restaurant and uh, we on Sundays, and we almost always ask what's for what's for dessert. <clears throat> I mean, you gotta eat, right? And you gotta eat dessert. And I think I had the best pecan pie I've ever had. Oh, my goodness. And Melanie knows I've eaten lots of pecan pie. We think about that, don't we, with Southern hospitality. We always include a nice sweet drink and something. It may be an Arnold Palmer, I guess, with, you know, half lemonade and half sweet tea. But we are just geared to welcoming people in our own space. But Jesus is pre preparing the disciples for radical hospitality when he says, go. Go and make disciples. Go, not y'all come. Go, not y'all come. I wonder if us as Southern, Southerners have begun to you know, translate this verse in a different way. Instead of really acknowledging that it says go, we are better suited for and that we would rather stay within our comfort and really just translate that. When Jesus says go, he really means y'all come. Y'all come on in and let's be friends. Y'all come on in and we'll show you how it's done. Go is different. Go is challenging. Go, we may have our doubts. It's always easier to stay put, stay the same, than to reach out in a new way to new people. Dr. Fred Craddock, professor at seminary and a famous preacher extraordinaire, tells the story of when he was preaching in a small congregation in rural Tennessee. It was actually near Oak Ridge where there was a sudden startup of thousands of people moving into the area because of the Atomic uh, Energy Commission. And this sleepy little town overnight became a city. Thousands of people had moved in with tents and trailers everywhere you looked. Construction workers were coming from all, every state. And Dr. Craddock's church was rather small. It seated about 80 people, hand-carved pews. He described it as very aristocratic. He called the board together to tell them what a great opportunity they had to invite people to come in and to be a part of their church, to reach out to these thousands of folks who had moved in. And he wanted them to, to begin to think about how they could welcome them and bring them into the church. But the chairman of the board said, no way, they're not our kind. Fred Craddock in his own way and Southern vernacular said, what do you mean? Not our kind. The board chair said, well, they're just living in tents and house trailers and everything. They're just transients following construction. They don't have roots or anything. They're not our kind. They wouldn't fit in with us. The board began to argue back and forth, Craddock says, and they called a church meeting the next Sunday where the first order of business was a motion. I move that anybody seeking membership in this church must own property in the county. Second, the motion was passed unanimously because the pastor couldn't vote. 
Years later, Craddock said he and his wife were trying to return to the area to find that little church that he had started with. And it became rather difficult to find because of the new interstate highways. But finally, he found the road that led up to his old church, and there it was with the parking lot packed with trucks and cars. Craddock recalls, he says, great day in the morning. They must be having revival. When he saw a sign out front, he recognized it probably wasn't. The sign out said, barbecued chicken, porks, ribs, and beans, all you can eat for $9.99. <laughs> they went inside and the place was full. The little organ was still in the corner, but it was no longer a church. As Craddock recalls this story, he says, there were some of the most gosh-awful people that you'd ever seen. There were motorcycles out front, while there were even trucks with rifles hanging out the back window. You'd never seen such a crowd. He said, I turned to my wife and said, it's a good thing this place is a restaurant because if there's still a church, they wouldn't fit in and they certainly wouldn't be served. You know, what could be more ironic than for people who would once be denied the bread of life and a place at the table than being later invited to a place all you can eat? Have you ever read or heard the book entitled Bowling Alone? It's a book that begins to describe a bit about how the American culture has shifted over the last several decades. Bowling Alone. The Collapse and Revival of American Community. Robert Putnam says that it affects all of us in our life, those especially who love the PTA, the service clubs, and church. The phrase bowling alone quickly became a catchphrase, a shorthand, for the claim that how social engagements were in decline. The point was that it's not that we're bowling less, we're bowling just as much as we used to but we are much less likely to do it in organized leagues. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't like the organized church? You know what I say to them now? I don't either. I don't like just organized religion, but I do love Jesus because he organizes my heart in a different way. But the author went on to say that how that we are even know that we're bowling, but we're also doing many, many other things in which people more and more are declining participation in a variety of civic arenas. Churches, labor unions, teacher organizations, fraternity groups, and civic participation in all areas have declined. He begins to show how this is America's stock of social capital and the connection between people that foster cooperation and trust. He says our social capital is in decline. Because we do not serve together as much, we do not trust each other as much. We live more of our lives alone. We eat alone. Our network of friends has shrunk and we're not as with as many people as we used to be. Come to think of it, you and I have been spending the last 15, 16 months where our social capital has shrunk immensely. But isn't this good to understand? And we don't need to beat ourselves up by even having some doubts about how that we will re-engage, having our doubts about how we will be the church again. When we recognize that this is a societal problem in which you and I need to think about how that we will be the community for all people. That you and I will practice radical hospitality. How will you and I open up our hearts to a growing population of strangers even in this place? Is it any wonder that people would want to move here? Who wouldn't want to live and be in this place? And how will you and I be the neighbor, be the church, to include people, to invite people to Sunday school class, to schoolmates to come and be a part of our children activities, to invite people to become a part of our significant groups, the choir, the Bible study, or whatever it is, that this social drift 
that's occurred within the pandemic and this social drift of bowling alone that can only be solved when you and I go and make disciples. Best of all, best of all, Jesus told his disciples that I will be with you. And when you and I go, even in the midst of our doubts, we're not alone either. The disciples must have heard Jesus when Jesus said, go. I know the best is yet to come when you and I will do the same. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Would you join with me in the prayer of confession and pardon as printed in your bulletin? Christ invites all to his table, all you can eat, all that you need. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ invites each and every one of us to the table. There are no barriers in the United Methodist Church. There are no restrictions. Just that you come, and to receive the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Communion has become one of the most challenging times for me. Now that I have gloves that come on, my mask breaks. I will go get another one because it's right outside. But I will give you the invitation to come. When he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And after supper, he lifted the cup and said, Take and drink all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we, your church, seek to follow you wherever you go. So Lord, as we come to your table, strengthen and empower us and give us courage and boldness to be the church that goes. Give us a sense of calling, O oh God, that we might call others into the fellowship of faith as, you, as we have heard that call for each one of us. Lord, may we extend that call to all the world. That others might hear the place and space they have at your table and in your church. May Sharp Memorial be that place of, of rest and comfort and peace. And may it be that place of challenge courage and boldness to seek justice to provide mercy and grace and renewal of heart and life lord as we come to this your table we come humbly asking of your guidance and your word for us to be the church to be a follower of your son jesus christ in his name we pray amen you are invited to come as the ushers escort you down the side aisle. Take off your mask as we then give you a piece of bread and then take the cup and place it into the basket after you're finished. Pray at the altar as long as you like. Won't you come?
It is so wonderful to be in a place where you're invited. It's so wonderful to be in a place where you're included. It's so wonderful to be in a place where you feel genuinely loved. To me, that is the church that goes. To me, that is a church that has nothing to stand in its way because we've got a story to, to tell to the nations and we will go and make disciples. Because of what I've discovered that as I go to try to make disciples, I myself am made in the going. I'm made myself even a little better, a little kinder, a little softer when I go and seek to be with the other. If you've never made a profession of faith, I want to invite you to come as God's Spirit leads you. If today you wish to come and to make this your family of faith, I want to invite you to come as we stand and sing our final hymn. Let us go and make disciples. Let's stand as we sing. We'll sing the first and the last, so one and four. Go make it. Uh, well, sorry. Please be seated. <laughs> we're uh, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do that. You're okay, do okay. That. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that we're trying to move as forward as we can, 
And uh, we said we were going to have a meeting on June the 2nd to kind of reconsider stuff. But as we're moving forward and faster with stuff, I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to call them quicker than that. Is that going to be okay if we make some more decisions? Uh, my, uh, my, my president, hold it, who lives next door, I call, that's what I call him, my president. At, at, uh, at graduation, he said, I'm just declaring, y'all take your masks off. Leave them on if you want to. And I figured if he can do that at graduation, well, maybe you and I can do that at church, right? So I'm thinking about a real wonderful Mother's Day next week. You think we'd make the mamas happy if we do something like that? Amen. Okay. Well, it's not my decision. It won't be, you know, but uh, we'll see how far I get with the administrative board. God bless you all. Please feel free to sing with us. Thank <laughs> you.